This is the Employee to Entrepreneur podcast, the podcast for the family man who's looking to leave his nine to five. So if you're a husband or a father and you're looking to escape the rat race, then this show is for you. I made this show for you because I am you. I'm your host, Brendan Ryan. And today I'm joined by my friend, Ben Byrne. And today we're going to be talking about the idea of energy management, which is a little bit different from time management, but it's a very pertinent topic for aspiring dadpreneurs because we have a limited amount of time and energy and it can help us be able to focus, to be able to get into a peak state so that we can execute our plans for our business and our life a little bit better. Ben, thanks for joining me today. What's up, man? Thanks for having me. This is long overdue. For sure. I met you in Colombia, and we talked about doing it then, but I uh, think we've both been traveling a little bit, so I'm very excited to have you on the podcast. Ben, for the listeners who aren't familiar with who you are, can you give us a brief intro of who you are, what you do? Yeah, 100%. I'm Ben Byrne. I love sales. I like to travel and I'm a really nice guy, like long walks on the beach (laughs) from Canada here. I've I've been in sales since about 20, probably 2015, right after I graduated from college. I, uh, I went to school for engineering. Long story short, I couldn't get a job. So I moved across the country, still couldn't get a job. And I got into door to door sales, selling solar panels, um, which my parents were thrilled about You're like, wow, you just finished engineering. Now you're do door to sales. What the hell? But, uh, <laughs> it turned out for the best, you know, it turned out all right. Here I am. Uh, right now, nice. just to catch you up to speed, I, I had, I, I kind of went a weird route. I went door to door sales, got into copywriting. So I was a freelance copywriter for a few years, started an agency doing that for a little while, got into coaching, doing that. Um, ended up getting burnt out. My business partner and I broke up our business. So, uh, I went and worked on Cole Gordon's team for a year doing sales for him. Worked with Alex Becker after that for a a very short amount of time. (laughs) Worked with um, Eli Wilde, who's like a top sales trainer guy. He used to, he he sold like a hundred million for Tony Robbins is amazing. And then uh, now with JK Molina with um, basically helping dudes scale their businesses on Twitter. And I'm also doing my own thing. So that brings us to today in like the, the 30 second version. Yeah, I pr- appreciate the abbreviated version. Um, yeah. So you, it sound, I didn't know about the agency, by the way. You, you started up a little agency for a little bit? Yeah, working with financial advisors, which is like the most fun I've ever had. Just <laughs> <laughs> what, what was it, a digital marketing agency? Or Yeah, we were like yeah. doing kind of like webinar funnels for them. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so I got to the point because I was doing the sales calls. I was writing the copy. I was I was doing a lot for these guys. And I was like, if I have to live here but one more stupid like retirement plan or something, I'm like gonna die. I'm gonna throw myself off my twenty sixth floor balcony at the time. So uh yeah, that's what ended that. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it sounds like you've had a few businesses as well on the side and now now you do a consulting type deal, right? Yeah, like on um, like my side gig now, like my my business, right? Yeah, yeah, I do coaching on like a few things. Um, so there's general sales coaching, but I also like to focus on um, like we spoke about it a little bit in Colombia, like energy management or state management stuff. So like how you show up to the call, your energy. But like what I found is that a lot of people focus on the words that you say. Like there's people that talk about mindset as well. But then there's like your, your energy is kind of like, not like you're showing up like, woo, like you have like all this energy necessarily, but it's like your demeanor and your confidence. Like, I think I watched a video of Alex Ramosi saying, taking your sales skills, you can take it from like a, a one to 10, right? If you go from a, a seven to an eight in sales skills, like how good you are at asking questions, your tonality, that will bump your income up maybe from like a, a 50K, like let's say from... 150k to 200k maybe or whatever the number is it's arbitrary it's very linear but if you could bring your confidence up confidence or certainty goes from it's not a scale of one to ten it's like zero to 100 it's like a percentage if you're like 100 confident and if you're able to show up with that energy 
hundred percent believe in what you do and that you're in your own value and, and all that stuff, all the stuff that goes on beneath the surface, so to say, that is like a, a blind spot for a lot of people. I found it was for me. Interesting. Okay. Is that, is that what you mean by energy management or can you explain what that is to the listeners? Yeah. I mean like energy management. So for me, I found like, um, it's, I, I don't like, I don't like the term energy management now because it's when people hear it, they're like, is that like a, it, it sounds too woo woo. Right. It sounds like, Oh, like, what are you going to do? Like uh, align my chakras with crystals and stuff like that. Are you <laughs> right? <Not sure>. Like, like <laughs> um, energy management, like for, for one, like when you're a business owner, for example, it's like, like I, I had a workflow to stay in flow. So like, I like to be in like flow state on my calls. So if you're taking five, six, seven calls a day, you're full time closer. It's really easy to get burnt out. So like energy management is how you're, you're it's like your self talk. It's like your habits, what you're doing to keep, keep yourself in a peak state. Like it's, uh, like it's almost like peak performance habits for salespeople. So like what I found so to give you the, the backstory of how I originally came across this on Cole Gordon's team, it's a super high performance team, um, you know, super intense culture. Like, like they train all the best sales teams in the industry at this point. And uh, my best month was in January of 2021, I think, or 2022 or whatever. And like, I was like a bit of a partier at the time. Like I went out and drank a lot. It's party on the weekends. I, I make like 9K or 10K or something. I'd be like, woohoo, like time, like I'm the best and go out and party. But my best month, I, I, two things happened to me. It was right after December, which I missed my projections for the first time and I was pissed. It's like, no, I'm not missing again. So it had a lot of conviction, but also um, it snowed every weekend here in Canada as it does. So I couldn't go out and party. And so I ended up crushing my old sales record that month. And I thought it was because of my skills. I was like, oh my God, wow, like I'm so good. But when I left the team and I thought about it, I was like, how come? I'm... It wasn't because I was so good. Cause like the next month I, I had a horrible breath. <laughs> so I was like, like I went right back to party. And so I was like, oh, like it was like all my habits outside of work were in alignment with my outcome of I wanted to hit like 30 sales, which was a lot more than I had made before in that team. <clears throat> so like I wasn't drinking, I was getting up early. I was working on the weekends. I was training. I was listening to sales calls every single day. I was like reviewing, I was, I was doing all this stuff, you know, and that was what allowed me to show up. Um, what's the word? Not with like better, I guess with better energy and, but I, I, I just think it's like all the confidence it comes from like your life outside of work. For sure. For sure. I, I think, um, right after I met you in Colombia, I was on Twitter and I think it was, I forget who tweeted it, but it was about energy management and it made it like click for me a little bit. I think it was, the, it was Grant, the CEO Grant. of sauce or whatever. Yeah. 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 And he, he was talking about how if you, if you go and you're, you're doing a lot of like, you know, you're watching some Netflix or maybe you're like smoking weed or, or whatever it might be. Um, you're spending like a lot of your dopamine on that, on that cheap thrill type of thing. And, yeah. and if you're able to management, manage that and spend your dopamine, your, your limited amount of dopamine on the things that actually move the needle for you, like sales or whatever it might be, then, you know, you, you often have better results. And I, um, I'm like a highly highly motivated person. Like I take massive action like every single day, but I do notice that sometimes like in, it just hit me like pretty good because I just got back from Cabo on a vacation and there yeah. was, you know, lots of drinking and that kind of thing. And it took me way, way too long to like get back into the swing of things, the, the, my morning routine and all that kind of stuff. And I noticed like, I just, my motivation is like, was so much lower after having come back from Cabo, even though like I'm all rested and recharged and like, I haven't done any sales calls for a week or whatever. Um, you would think that like, I'd be ready to go, but it was like so much harder to get back into it. Um, mm. do you, do you think that that's part of it? hundred percent, hundred percent, dude. Like I almost think of these, uh, it's like, 
what is the actual difference between you and I or like people in general, like besides the physical, it's, it's usually their habits. Like what are they actually doing? Right. Like a lot of this stuff at the end of the day is like your habits. Well, like how come one person can close 50% of the time? One person closes like 20. Like, well, they have different habits on the call. How come one person's super motivated every day? How could I used to think people in general are like, they were like disciplined people. And then there are people who just didn't have it. It's like, it's like an, in, a, a trait you're born with, but really like discipline is a great example because it's something that like you build that up over time. And so yeah. the way I think about these dopamine things, like to kind of tie that in there, like I, like I almost think of them as like energy leaks. So it's like, like I feel the best when I'm eating clean. I'm not like out eating like, trash garbage food i'm not drinking i haven't drank since november um or done drugs (laughs) um when i'm not like like just playing xbox for hours or like just like at the end of the day just like mindlessly kind of like watching netflix or something like that like there's all these different areas where like your your tension could go or it doesn't really help you it doesn't really build you in any way usually it's just like it's a, a, a way to turn off your brain and without going too far down the rabbit hole of all these different like areas, like the more you put it, like if I went out and drink for a, a, like a week, I would be like, Oh my God, like, <laughs> what, like what the hell? <laughs> like that's basically why I stopped drinking. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was part of it. Cause I was drinking like every day in Cabo. <laughs> so, but I like that idea of it, calling it an energy leak. I think that that's, um, that's a, like a good mental switch. Sometimes just the language that we use helps us to understand like what it is and why we should avoid it. And to that point, what would you say is like, are the biggest energy like leaks are some bigger than others? hundred percent. Um, there's a lot of them usually like, the, the main culprits are your bad habits. So it could be alcohol or drugs. It could be just mindless entertainment, like watching Netflix for hours or um, whatever. It could be, I mean, for me, it's like sleeping in. Like I, if I sleep in until like 10 o'clock, I usually I'm up at like four, maybe five at the latest. But if I sleep in until 10, I feel like I'm hungover. I'm like, oh, I just feel like a sack of shit. There's usually there's things that you're doing that if you kind of like feel like regret about it, like after doing it, that is like an energy leak. So for example, like, like you're never super proud of yourself after like you just watched porn, for example, you're like, Oh hell yeah. I just crushed watching porn. That was sick. Like go me. Like, no, like that's like the biggest example of a dopamine, like hijacker, you know, like, it's like this free reward for something you, you didn't earn. Uh, you're never that like, oh, hell thing. yeah. I, I, uh, I like, I'm so, <laughs> I'm glad I drank those 24 beer last night. Like that was sick. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. It might be the worst one. Yeah. Or dr- drinking is, seems like it's a, a big one for me just cause it, it, it's just like such a poison. Like you're always hung over. Like you always feel like crap the next day. <laughs> Dude, it was so brutal for me because like, uh, I would go out and drink, like, let's say I go out drink Friday, Saturday, obviously here in Canada, it's a big drinking culture, but really every place is a big drinking culture now, it seems like, but like my performance would be like horrible Monday, Tuesday. And I feel like my brain is just starting to work again, kind of on Wednesday by Thursday. I'm like recovered. And then it's like, woohoo, it's almost the weekend. Friday, boom, just restarted again. So for me, like, I honestly think quitting alcohol was like the biggest, the best decision I've ever made. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's such a, such an energy link. Absolutely. So I think this is a great topic for my target audience of this podcast because I, I'm, talking to aspiring dadpreneurs, guys that maybe have a nine to five that are trying to start their own side hustle. And those guys, because they have a job and a family and they're yeah. building a business, they have pretty limited time, right? So you, you have to be 100%. really on on point with your time management, but also with your, your energy management. Actually, that's a good question. Is time management and energy management like pretty related, would you say? Or Yeah. 
So when you're like, it's interesting because <clears throat> have you ever been in like a, like a, a state of flow? You know, yeah, a lot of people sure. get in there in sports is common or skiing or something of that nature or wakeboarding like we were doing in Columbia. Time kind of like slows down, right? So it's like when, if you were to be in flow like all day, because you're so focused, nothing else is like really getting in there. You're just like getting it done, like getting work done. Boom, boom, boom. Like you would get a lot more done than if you were just like in your normal state of consciousness. Right. So there's something to there's, there's an argument that you can make that like energy management is more important than time management. Because like, if you can get three times more done in an hour, if you're like super locked in versus, you know, just trying to manage your time and like, Oh, I'm going to do this task here and this task there. Like which one makes more sense basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's understandable. So we, so you mentioned earlier, like being able to get into a flow state. So are you able to get into a, a flow state like reliably, would you say? Yeah. Whenever I do something like this, we are just kind of like giving value, shooting shit, like, Talking to people is a good way to get into it. In other ways, like basically, it, if you look at the science of it, a lot of it goes by um, how much like blood oxygenation you have in your brain. So, like when you, nobody wakes up in the morning and they're like, "Uh, I'm in flow," like it's because you you don't have any. It's like you have the lowest amount of oxygen. That's why you're not really nobody. Like not many people wake up and they're like just jumping out of bed and like, ah, like just a bundle of sunshine, you know, they, uh, so basically the idea is if you do something where it's high intense activity, some kind of physical, um, maybe it's a hundred burpees as soon as you get up or you go to the gym or you go for a run or whatever your version of that is that being in that really like high blood oxygenation activity, like, if you go and do like a call right after you will be like locked in. So that's like the, uh, the hack that I use. Gotcha. Yeah. I can totally relate to that. Actually. I've said on previous episodes of the podcast that I usually get my best ideas. Um, when I'm doing one of two things, one, one is either Wim Hof breathing, right? Which is the idea. Yeah, like you, you're definitely one. trying to, yeah, in, increase the, uh, your oxygenation to your brain. But also if I'm like going for kind of like a long run, um, and the, you can see obviously why, you know, you, your circulatory systems pumping tons of blood. But I also, I think just those two activities, because they take me away a little bit from, from the, the grind or all the distractions or whatever. Like if I'm just like out running, yeah. which I almost never do anymore, by the way, but, um, if I'm just well, out Florida, away from so everything, like billion, billion degrees, I don't blame you. Oh, in the summer, bro, it's so brutal. I can, it, like it's just so humid that you have like a heat stroke trying to run out there. Um, but yeah, I've always noticed that like I get I'm I have my best thoughts and I get my my best ideas when I'm doing those two things. But um, yeah, I can relate also to the idea of being in a flow state when you're when you're doing like a, a really intense activity where you like have to focus, otherwise you're like going to die or yeah. something like that. So Pretty something much. like an extreme, extreme sport or something, right? Like you're, you're snowboarding or something. And it's like, you have to be in the zone. You have to be focused. Otherwise, like the stakes are just too high to just be distracted on your phone or whatever, or thinking about like, or you're going to have for lunch. Like you right. just can't do like, that. You know, it's because you're not states. thinking about anything else. You're not thinking about the past or the present. <clears throat> Yeah, there's a lot yeah, of things that, that can take you to that state of mind, you know, like it could be dancing with a hot chick or it could be doing bedroom activities. Uh, it could be, you know, all kinds of things. It could be a sales call. It could be a coaching call. It could be um, just talking to a friend. It could be cleaning their house, you know, like, um, with, but yeah, <laughs> I would say actually that the sales calls do sometimes get me in a flow state, especially if it's something like a big deal that I'm, I'm like really focused on, really excited about. And it's a zoom call or whatever. I'm like definitely yeah. pretty in the moment. It's not like I'm over here, like checking my phone while they're talking or, or anything like that. And so I think that's actually part okay. of why I like sales or I like podcasting is because I'm like locked into this conversation. I'm like highly focused on it. 
Um, yep. Whereas there's so many other things in my life that I'm doing all the time that I'm You're always constantly doing two or three distracted. Things at the time. Yeah. 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 Just always multitasking. Right. <laughs> it's so it seems so rare nowadays that we actually are locked in and focused on what we're doing. We're like always multitasking. Mm. Dude, you said something interesting there uh, to kind of not really change the topic, but it's related. So what you said when I'm at, I have a big sales call, I'm really excited for it. You know, um, another source of energy that if you think about it, like there's some people are kind kind of like, they're always trying to push towards their goals. Like, it's just like, like, oh, I'm using willpower to go to the gym today. Da, 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 da. Like then there's energy that pulls us. Like when we are super excited about something, like when we were a kid and it's like the day before Christmas, like, oh my God, I can't even sleep. Like you're so excited. You have this anticipation for the future. See, um, when you have a big goal, when you have something that you're working towards that gets you out of bed and super exciting, like you're focused on your brain's like focus on like a positive image of the future. It creates those feelings of excitement. And, um, that's a huge source of energy for people that you can tap into. I just made a video about that yesterday. Um, likewise, like what a lot of people will do though, is they might have a big call coming up and the opposite happens rather than get excited. They start getting worried and they're like, they start freaking out because their mind goes to the negative. Oh, like, like I'm going to, if this deal falls through, uh, like I'm going to be like homeless or like my boss is going to fire me or like all these negative things. And, uh, it's just how, you know, if your brain is focused on the right thing based on how you feel. So if you're excited and you're like, Oh, I can't wait for this. You know that your brain's, focus on the right thing. If you're focused on, if you're feeling negative, like fear or uncertainty, anxious, whatever, like your brain is literally just focused on a negative outcome, which you don't want. Yeah, but, absolutely. It's just as, something as simple as like whether or not you're focusing on the, the upside or the downside, right? It's just what you focus yeah. on expands. So if you're, you're focused on this big deal that could, you know, land you a big commission or whatever, then, uh, then you might be more excited rather than, than uh, worried about losing your job or whatever it might be. So, so is it possible, would you say, to be able to – how how do you put yourself in a flow state or a peak state, if you don't mind me asking? Is it, do you have like some type of NLP anchor or anything like that? Mm. Usually just exercise is the main one. So <clears throat> like for example, like – I like to be in flow before I, I do my videos. I do like two videos a day, post on Instagram. Um, so I always do those almost always right after the gym or right after like a coaching call, right after a sales call. And so, um, yeah, it's like I go to the gym in the morning. First thing I, like I have like my little morning routine, get up early, go to the gym. Um, usually if, like usually going to the gym will like put me in flow for like an hour and a half. I'll usually have my first sales call right after that. And then I have like a downtime, like maybe I'll have like an hour before my next call or, or whatever. If I, if I have that downtime, I'll kind of do something to put myself in like a, a low power mode. So I'll go and do something that doesn't require a lot of thought. It doesn't require me to be super present, like go and like, I don't know, cook some food or, wash the dishes or just like go for a quick walk, answer email, something like that. And then, um, I'll, I'll, I'll typically jump back and do some like kind of like high intense activity, like, you know, push ups or burpees or something, or like air squats, something like that. And the reason why I do those is because it kind of like kills two birds with one stone. Obviously it keeps you healthy and keeps you moving. It's like physical, it's building up your body, but it also has the effect of kicking you back up into like a, high flow state. So it's like easy to just jump right back into it. If I have another call coming up. So it's kind of like workflow. So it's like flow kind of like low power mode and then high intense activity back up into flow. And gotcha. you can just do that a couple times a day. So you, you're almost like pairing activities together. Like you have an activity like for you, for you, it seems like exercise works very well to get yourself into a flow state. And then you pair it with a sales call or whatever it might be. Is that, is that kind of how you go about it? Yeah. What, like whatever you need to be in that flow state for <clears throat> could be shooting content. Yeah. It could be, uh, 
coaching people. It could be sales calls. The nice thing about what I do now is I coach clients and I do sales and really all these things. I built my life around like things that I like doing, but, but also it's like you get into flow state for them. Sure. Absolutely. So it seems like there's activities that are energy leaks, right? Things like, you know, smoking weed or watching Netflix or whatever it might be. And then you have activities that are energy giving or something. I, I don't know what word we want to use for that, but like exercise would be mm -hmm. the, the typical example of something that like gives you energy, which is funny because a lot of people think that like, you know, you go and exercise, you might be more tired, but um, I think hopefully a lot of people can relate to the idea where you, sometimes you're tired, you go exercise and all of a sudden you have more energy. Um, yeah. Usually but, you're, you being tired is just like a, a byproduct of like a negative state of mind. So like, you're like, Oh, like, cause for example, on, uh, on the weekend I went out with my friend and, um, the next day I, I woke up really like I woke, I slept in and I was, I was like, Oh, like I don't feel like going to the gym today. And uh, I was like, yeah, I'm too tired. And my brain starts coming up with all these excuses. And I'm at this point, I catch myself. I'm like, oh, that's just like, I'm in like a low frequency state, a low vibration, whatever you want to call it. Just like a low state of mind. There's positive and negative. I'm like in a negative state of mind because I didn't, yeah, I was out last night until 5 a.m. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I just recognize that. And I was just like, well, I'm just going to, uh, do my routine anyway, regardless of how I feel like I'm just going to do like a hundred burpees, uh, as fast as possible. And then, Oh, what do you know? Like I suddenly start feeling better and yeah, kind of like right back into it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that's, that's, uh, the beauty of having those, like those good habits or those virtues is that they, um, you, you have, you've built up that, that discipline that even when you have low willpower, that you can still do it when you don't want to. And then it ends up, you know, giving you energy or whatever it might be for you. So they, it seems like exercise is a big one, right? We mentioned exercise. I, I think Wim, Wim Hof breathing has helped me, but can you think of any other like energy giving like activities that you might do to um, put yourself in a, a peak state? Like for instance, would be, would um, yeah. going out into nature be one? Like it could, yeah. going for a hike? I, I like doing ones that have like a dual purpose. So there's lots of things you could do. Um, like since I like sell coaching and stuff and I coaching is basically helping people <laughs> for, for money. Um, one thing I, I realized because a few years ago I had this, this mentor who said, whenever you're in a rut, just jump on a sales or on a call with somebody with no expectations to so just help them. Right. If you just, if you, didn't close your past 10 sales or your past, like you went two weeks with no closes. You're like, Oh my God, like you're just digging yourself further and further into a hole. But if you jump on a call, it's just help people, no expectations, something about that energy dynamic. It's like, it kicks you out of it. And then uh, I realized that like, I would get off a podcast like this, or I would get off a really good conversation where I, I'm like just helping one of my friends, you know, a lot of friends in business and sometimes just call them up and say, Hey, what's up? And then just talk and, get some value. And next thing you know, I'm like, like vibing high again, you know? So that's a big one because that can also end up with you closing sales or getting clients or whatever. Um, but yeah, you could obviously go out and do all kinds of things. You can go for a bike ride. You can go for the hike in the woods. You can go fishing or something. I don't know. Like there's, there's all kinds of things you, you definitely could do. Yeah. And that, that's a great one though. It's, it kind of just reminds me of, you know, what people would call like a, a random act of kindness, if you will. Um, yeah. just, you know, it could be as simple as just giving some stranger a compliment or paying for the food or yeah, or just helping somebody out with zero expectations in return, like you were saying, but that that's a huge one, I think. Um, and one, unfortunately, I think a lot of people, including myself, would overlook, right? Because I, I'm thinking of energy giving activities right now. I'm like thinking, okay, Wim Hof breathing, exercise, going out in nature, and, and I don't come up with that one. But that one's a huge. I think that one is is for sure a, a really good one. So yeah, I mean, it, it always works. It's just one that literally just always works. And like you, when you have a big enough audience, you know, there's I always have random people messaging me. Sometimes I'll just call them. <laughs> I'll call them on Instagram. I'm like, hey, what's up? I'm like, oh, what's, you're calling me. I'm like, yeah. 
what's up? <laughs> like you know, people asking you questions and stuff. If I have some downtime and I'm like, why not? Man, you're, you're going to get all kinds of calls after this episode now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm probably going to sell you something. So don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> sell you some coaching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll sell you something. I don't know what it'll be. So you, you know, we, we started talking about energy management because you were helping Jeff Lundin, who we were with in, in Colombia, um, with it. So how did you find yourself doing coaching? I know you do coaching for, for sales and, and different things, but how did you find yourself doing coaching for that? Yeah, it was uh, basically me thinking back to when I had my best month in sales on Colseem and putting the pieces together. I was like, huh, you know, it's like what I, what I kind of surmised was that we all want like high performance results. We want to make the high performance income from being a high performer, like closing all the sales, being the best entrepreneur we can be this and that. And I thought like, if, if we were to like, think of it like in a pie graph, you have like a certain percentage of your day is sleeping certain percentage of your day's work. And then there's like not work. Right. And I was like, everyone over optimizes in my experience for like the time when they're working, like, Oh, I'm going to like, I'm going to double down. I'm going to work twice as hard. I'm going to work instead of in order to make more money. I'm going to work 10 hours or 12 hours rather than eight. Or like, I'm going to keep doubling down on my skills, keep doubling down on my sales skills, my sales skills. But we always like neglect the stuff that we're doing before work and after work. <laughs> and so for me, I started, um, you know, just putting the pieces together. It's like, okay, this month that I had a really good month, I wasn't drinking. So like, what if I eliminated that and I wasn't partying and I was just, I had a morning routine where I was getting up and going to the gym before work and I was doing this, I was doing that. I was had like my journal and I was writing down all these things that I was doing that were like my regrets from the day before and trying to eliminate them. And then, um, I basically found that I had so much energy after doing that. I was like, holy crap. It, it just seemed like this is something that nobody was talking about, but it had like a, a huge, huge impact on uh, just everything. Like how I was showing up, how it felt, how my overall like level of confidence and, and all these things that you wouldn't really expect if you, uh, if you didn't know where to look. Yeah. You, you mentioned a, a quick exercise there about journaling and writing down like your regrets and trying to eliminate them. Can you, can you talk about that for a minute? Cause that piqued my interest. It seems like it's would be something that um, would be a yeah. great thing to add. Every morning I have like a little, it's the first thing I do. I, I, I get up at five, <clears throat> walk to the fridge have a bottle of ice cold water in my fridge. I chug it and it wakes me up like, ah, I came up or 4.30 or 4, whatever. And then I have a journal right there with a pen. And the only thing I write about are things that cause me regrets from the day before. And so um, at one time, I started doing this in November of last year. It was right after like, the last time I went drinking because I was driving one of those electric scooters and I crashed and I had so much regret. I was like, ah, so I like, Basically, uh, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm completely eliminating this. And then like, usually it starts off with big things. It's like, oh, I was like mean to my kids. Or it's like, oh, I, I drank like a 12 pack of beer last night. I feel like shit. Or, oh, I was, I, uh, I don't know. I, whatever. It's like big things. And then I just kept eliminating things. I like, I, this is like causing me to feel like, for example, um, it, it, like, let's say you have a, a big fight with your wife and you're like, you're a bitch. Like I hate you. Like you, you just call her all the names in the book for whatever reason. You have a moment of weakness. you you would be thinking about that for probably, well, for the next, like <laughs> a long time. Cause after you stop thinking about it, she'd still probably bring it up. Cause that's what women do. But, um, that feeling of you thinking about it, running over, over and over again, that is like a massive energy leak because like that focus, if you would, would have put that 100% pure focus, into your business, you would have made a bunch of money and you would have been more productive, but now you have 50% focus because half of your brain, or maybe even less because you have a certain amount of your brain that's going over that event, that negative thing that you did, which is causing you regret. And like regret is 
stealing your focus, which is stealing your energy and your productivity and your money and all this stuff. And so if I was like, okay, if I just eliminate all these things, a lot of them I keep doing on a day-to-day -day basis because I'm an idiot. But once I start bringing awareness to it, oh, like quit drinking. Oh, quit eating like junk food. I, I, I got to the point where every day was kind of the same. I was like, okay, I'm waking up this time. I'm eating these foods, tracking my foods, um, going to the gym, feeding my mind with positive stuff. Like I read like some positive book right after doing that journal thing and then making content, doing sales, doing coaching. And then, um, it, it gets really easy to see like, Oh, why do I feel like crap today? And like, like, Oh, I did this one thing here. <laughs> like, Oh, I think, you know, I, I, I called my mom and, and I got annoyed with her or something like that. Like, ah, like, so it's like, it gets really easy to see where, like to attribute where these certain negative feelings are coming from. Like, Oh, like this happened. So I'm going to fix this. And it just, it, I found like, um, I started going to bed with no regrets. And it was like, boom, like I would just fall asleep like instantly. Whereas before, sometimes I'd have trouble sleeping and I'm like, it, it's weird. There's, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Man, that that's such a win though. I, I love what you just said right there where you, you can go to bed with no regrets. I think that that's, that's a, that's a great way to live your life. Right. But I think also I can see where that yeah. particular exercise would be excellent for helping you figure out, like you were saying, you start with the big stuff, like the obvious stuff, you know, you got in a fight with your wife, you drank too much or yeah. whatever, but over time, like once you start to eliminate those things, I could see where it would help you hone in on like maybe the, the smaller, like the micro, the micro. adjustments. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. So that's, it's a, like, that's a really uh, like, good. I should have said this on the sales call. Like, oh, yesterday I let this guy say this when I should have said this. It's like, it, it gets down to like my new character things. Like, oh, you know what? I realized that I have this trend over the past few months. It's been affecting me in this relationship. It's been affecting me in my business. It's affecting me this. And it's that I could be more direct with people. I could be more direct going after things I want, whereas I've been like waiting for things to come to me. And it's been like, huge pain point because it's affecting me all these different areas. So now I'm going to figure out, okay, well, like I got to pre-program myself when this situation happens, I'm going to do this. So like they start, like they call it like auto suggestion, conscious auto suggestion. So it's like, for example, if you keep getting the objection that, Oh, this every time I, I talk to these people and, and they say like, Oh, that's too much. I just, I, I freeze up and I don't know what to say. So it's like, well, you just practice that, that objection handle and, Okay, and the next situation is this boom, it's like automatic. You just automatically do the right thing. So it's kind of the, sort of the same idea. Yeah. But I have that awareness yeah. because I've been doing this practice for the past like year basically. If not, yeah. that's a cool way to apply the auto suggestion from Think and Grow Rich. It's a, a great idea. So, did you, th speaking of Think and Grow Rich, are, are there any good like books on energy management or how did you learn about this? Was it just kind of trial and error and something you figured out on your uh, own or, or what? There's some books that kind of go into, um, like part of the stuff, like part of energy management, <clears throat> there's like state management, which comes from like Tony Robbins talks about that a lot. Um, there's like the, the triad. So it's like your, your state, like your overall state, like if you're feeling confident or if you're feeling, you know, unconfident, for example, it's like your focus, your language and physiology, and then your meanings. So to kind of go back to the example that I mentioned earlier, if, if you're feeling really like excited for a sales call, like you're, you're probably focused on the positive, like what's going to happen and what's that going to mean for you once you close this guy and, and like why everything's going to go your way. And uh, that produces the physiology of being confident. Right. And so that's part of it. So it's like knowing how to control your state. So like, if you just get a horrible rejection, this person's like, I hate you. I hope you like die in a fire. <laughs> You're ugly. Your beard's stupid. And uh, I, I can't smell you through zoom, but I, you look like you smell like, I'm like, Oh my God, damn. But like, I can instantly catch that through state management. Like, well, like, let me just change my focus by asking myself a different question. Like what's oh, like, you know, that's, so that's part of it. Um, the other stuff I just kind of stumbled upon, um, I've been like studying personal development for the past, I don't know, 15 years. What, what's the, what's some of the best books you've read on that, by the way? Just personal, personal development, development in general. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got a few just like just chilling on the shelf there, but, um, 
uh, cycle cybernetics is, is a good one. <clears throat> There's uh, that one's old school, right? Like, isn't that is that kind of old school? Pretty old, old school, yeah. Maxwell Maltz wrote it. He was like a plastic yeah. surgeon. He um, he was like the self help guru before uh, of like the fifties or something like that. Um, there's a lot of those like Napoleon Hills, um, Oh, Waiting the Devil's a good one by, by Napoleon Hill. Um, Think and Grow Rich. There's like, there's so many that I've read. I just, I'd have to literally sit down and think of what are some of the great ones. Um, so there's yeah, Levels I- of Energy by Frederick Dodson, which is an interesting book, which is kind of different, but kind of related. Um, I know Jeff was reading that when we went to visit him. Um, yeah. Yeah. Seems very pertinent to energy management. Is it pertinent to energy management or is it totally different? It's totally different for the most okay. part. Actually it's not because there's like, <clears throat> just to give you like the quick summary, I know you're, you got a call coming up. Um, the levels of energy, there's a, there's a book called power versus force and levels of energy. They both talk about the same thing. It's like you take the scale of human consciousness. So it's like at the very bottom, you have like a, uh, there's someone who's completely full of, it's like, it goes by emotions. So it's like someone full of shame and all these, the worst negative emotions, they're at the very bottom. It's like, it's ranked from zero to like a thousand. And at a thousand, it's like, it's like Jesus, Buddha, you know, whoever the, the these godly people are, the uh, basically like enlightened people. Um, and so basically the levels of energy is like up to 200 or whatever. It's all negative. It's all like, um, destructive emotion. So it's like, I, I, you can Google it. You can literally just search up frequency chart or something and you can see the chart. Um, big picture. It's like, you know, if you're in a negative state, just based on like, what are your focus on? Like, oh, I feel like crap, I'm feeling tired. I feel sick. Uh, I feel angry. I'm depressed, whatever. There's like negative states. If we want to get out of them and get into a positive state, we have to do something to get us into a flow state. And when you're in flow, like your brain works better. Like you, you, uh, you have, uh, it's hard, it, it's hard to describe. It's like, you, you think better, you think faster. You know, if you're on a sales call, you're, you're actually there in the moment. <clears throat> you think of things on a call that you would never would have read in a script. It just came to you. You're like, where'd you hear that from? I have so many people that ask me like, like even with my old content stuff, they're like, where did you come up with this? Or where did you hear this idea from? I'm like, well, when you're in flow, you, you just, it's almost like you get downloads from like the universe or something. It's weird. It's like, I, well, I just thought of it. Like I was in flow and yeah. it, like you spend a lot of time there, you get more creative and smarter, faster, stronger, sexier. Maybe not. Yeah, sexier, I mean, yeah. <laughs> in a way, um, but yeah, I like when I think of flow, I, I think, you know, of the focus and being in the present moment and, and, um, just being um, maybe potentially genuinely happy or like enjoying what you're doing too. I think for me is, as part of it, I'm trying to think of whether or not it's possible yeah. to be like in a flow state and like not be enjoying it. <laughs> you like, think that's nobody possible? is like, no, no, that's the whole thing. It's like, nobody is running like a marathon and they're depressed. Or they're like pissed, they're like oh, I hate this marathon. Like you're probably you're probably like stupid. I've never run a marathon, so maybe that's completely wrong. There's someone who's watching this. Like <laughs> I run marathons all the time, and I hate it. <laughs> you know, I'm like just like I want to shoot somebody halfway through. Maybe that's the case, but in general, like when you're doing some type of physical intense activity, you know, when we were climbing that big rock in Guatape. Uh, we're not like, Oh, like, like hating our lives. It, it was hot and it was steep and stuff, but like, you know, it was like challenging versus like, you weren't like, Oh, I got bills to pay and stuff. Like all you're thinking of is getting up this damn rock. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. I was just thinking to myself, like if somebody was running a marathon and they hate it, it's like, bro, that seems like a weird, a weird thing because it takes so long. <laughs> if yeah. You, hated you it just so found out that you hated this. Weren't you training? Like I'm the type of person who just wouldn't even train. Like I don't need to train for the marathon. I'll just go do it. Like realize halfway <laughs> through it. I'm like, like, what am I doing? I'm an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't train so ben, for a marathon. You just go and run. But anyway. So, so Ben, if, if somebody 
would like to find out more about you or get coaching from you or, you know, look into energy management, where can they find you? What's the best place? I'm most active on Instagram at Ben W. Byrne. So B-Y-R-N-E. Um, same handle on Twitter. Just shoot me a DM. Say what's up. Saw you on Brendan's podcast. Tell me your secrets. Um, <laughs> and uh, we can have a chat about it. Pretty easy to find. Yeah, man. I, I want you to get back on on Twitter. You used to tweet a lot. I've noticed that like you haven't been on there as much, but you've been on the Instagram grind quite a bit lately. Like you've been pumping out. Yeah, yeah. I, um, dude. I, I, one day we we'll talk about energy management. I wrote a thousand tweets in a day, and I made a shit ton. I made two like a, two YouTube videos. I had about six sales calls, coaching calls. I had uh, so the thousand tweets. I had. I wrote. I made a bunch of Instagram videos like a full thing of stories. And it's funny because I was on the airplane going back from Columbia, looking at through my photos. It was like January 10th or something like that or 9th. And it was like all these photos, it looked like it was weeks worth of content, but all the timestamp was for the same day. I was like, I was locked in that day. And uh, <laughs> I've been like, basically I wrote all my tweets for the year or maybe two years on that one day. So I got to get back onto it. This long story short. <laughs> so, so that, that a thousand tweets ran out and you're just like, nah, I don't want <laughs> Is that out where you're at? Yeah. I don't know. I just like ran out of things to say, basically. <laughs> also, I had a coach. The same things over and over again. Yeah. I had a coach that was like, uh, you know, you want to grow a personal brand and you do that through video, not uh, just writing stuff. And so, it's funny because the company I work for, like we help guys scale on Twitter, which involves a lot of writing. So it's not like I'm against it, but um, yeah, I've just been getting, I've been enjoying creating videos more than writing stuff because I've been copywriter for so long, but you know, making videos, getting better at that. It's something where I can see the, the progress and um, I get enjoyment just out of making videos. Another way that gets me in flow, but yeah, that's uh it's a good question. I got to get back on Twitter. Yeah, no, I can see that. I, I mean, I, I get enjoyment out of just doing this podcast. So I, I hear you in terms of getting in the flow state, having those energy giving activities. And so guys, if you're listening to this on YouTube, please give it a like and subscribe or on Apple podcasts. I'd appreciate it if you left it a review. If you need Ben's help with energy management, which is huge, like we like he was saying earlier, better than time management. If you're an aspiring dadpreneur out there that needs help with that, reach out to him, hit him up on Twitter or Instagram, um, and he'll, he'll help you out. But guys, if you're thinking about making the leap from employee to entrepreneur, highly implore you to do so. Please make the leap from employee to entrepreneur because I truly believe that the world needs more entrepreneurs. So join me, join Enjoy. Ben, and we will see you on the other side. Yes, sir.